previous episode, this short film was the pinnacle of run and gun filmmaking, which pretty much involves every aspect of the production, including the cinematography. My role behind the camera, I was um, I was the camera guy. I was just working the camera. Since I wanted the short film to get done in the next five years, I decided to go ahead and act as the main protagonist in the film, which I did not want to do, but I said screw it. I knew this was going to be a run and gun shoot, so about a month or so before we went into production, I actually storyboarded the entire film, drew it all on index cards, and actually put it into a nice little photo album, which actually I find helped, did a lot and helped kept me motivated because I wanted to see this whole thing completed. It just, I don't know, it just enticed me to actually fill this photo album with the, the story of this film. I recommend uh, that you do that. If you, uh, storyboards for me have always been a struggle to do. Um, I've, uh, most, almost everything I've done previously, uh, I would storyboard a little bit and then I'd get bored and I'd just do shot lists. Not to say shot lists are easy or anything, um, or uh, lazy in any sort of way, but uh, that's, that's just, was always my uh, uh, default go-to uh, cop out, so to say. So, um, but really, I would if you're if you're in the same situation where you know you know you need to storyboard them or you want to storyboard your entire film, but you kind of lose the motivation. Try putting everything into a photo album in the proper sequence and lay it all out in the movie to try and, and get a grasp of it on hand, and then that that will see if that gives you the motivation to. Uh, actually complete the whole thing. It's gonna take some time, don't get me wrong, it is not easy. Even if you're not so good at drawing like me, or don't have the patience to do it, laying out your entire film on the storyboards is a great way to pre-visualize your film, which was very important to us when we were doing a run and gun production like this. So since I was on camera a lot of the time, that left a lot of the cinematography and camera work down to Dylan the Man Listener. So I kind of took over that aspect when he would be on camera. I always showed him the take afterwards and get his approval because it is his film, so he's got to see it before we move on. And Dylan actually works as a news photographer for a uh, small startup uh, news station up in Lafayette, Indiana. Even though he has a different background field, he is still amazingly talented and very hardworking and quick to learn uh, the, the tricks and everything that was needed to complete this film. I also have to give big thanks to Mr. Ryan Long for lending me the slider. I knew I wanted to get some movement in this short film and I wanted some really dynamic shots and uh, without that it just would not have been possible. So big thanks to him. To be 100% honest, I wasn't thinking of a certain uh, look or feel to the film. I knew I wanted it to be kind of uncomfortable and eerie at times. I knew I wanted a lot of movement because I knew that would help bring this production a little bit to the next level. Once you get off the tripod, go a little bit handheld or steady cam or whatever, and you get really get some really good dynamic movements in your short films, I feel that's what you can do to bring it to the next level, in my opinion. And the results are pretty much on the screen. Pretty much what was on the storyboards for the most part ended up in the film. There were a few things that we had to throw out because we just ran out of time and everything, but everything turned out pretty much the same. And I'm very proud of that. The one of the best shots that uh, we did, the one where Michael is dead in the cornfield and it's the slide to reveal his face. I, I, I'm really proud of how that came up and came out. And My absolute favorite shot in the whole film is when the supposed drunk driver uh, walks out of the car and we go from the the front fender of the car and just have that sliding shot of him stepping out of the car that one boot comes out and the the beer bottle drops out he closes the door he's got a gun in his hand and then it just slowly pans up to the reveal i just like how everything came together you see the bottle fall his leg step out it's just a nice really smooth pan and a little tip for what i did to get that kind of really smooth uh, pan was that I just kind of used a fingertip, just to, just to kind of help guide it along. It wasn't going too slow, but it wasn't going too fast. That shot, I remember when I saw the playback of it, I was just like, yes, yes, we got it. it looks great. Yeah, it looks, looks great. Looks, it looks, looks fucking great. It looks fucking great. All right. That, that, that's just one of those, the, satis the satisfying things of filmmaking. 
uh, when you finally see, when you finally start to see your work, all your work you've done come together. So I'm very proud of that. And I couldn't have done it without Dylan and Ryan too. So I got to give a big thanks to them once again. But that's going to do it for this behind the scenes episode of Awaken. Thanks guys so much for watching. If you haven't seen the short film, what are you doing? Go ahead and check it out now. I'll make sure to leave a link to the playlist for all the behind the scenes episodes. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button to be notified when the next episode comes up. Thanks guys, and I will see you next time.